met his wife actually across the border when he was touring um, with the soldiers, and she was German. Uh, right across the Rhine they lived. But of course they immigrated here into the United States in uh, 1839, and they brought me with them, along with my brothers George and Jacob. So we were actually in the potting trade. Um, I only being five years old watched, kind of interested because uh, even at that early age, you had to consider that your, your future trade. Uh, so of course my father originally started working at the Main Street Pottery, eventually was leasing it, and eventually from that point became an owner. Jake McCare, my brother, he ended up actually owning the Union Street Pottery. So they're semi in competition with each other. So I worked both potteries. You know, at the same time, uh, Poughkeepsie had just developed the public school system. So I was one of the early, um, relatively poor individuals who got to benefit from the public schools. Uh, eventually, when I was 16 years old, after learning much of the trade from my family, I decided to go out on my own, and I became a journeyman potter. So I was potting over in Hartford, Connecticut, as well as um, Amboy, New Jersey. The interesting thing about stoneware pottery is basically how it's made, and uh, I always had a love for, for the art because I would be able to use my hands and I was always a bit of a salesman anyway as, as far as being able to market my, my pottery. Um, in 1857 an opportunity, a business opportunity came up and I was able to acquire half of the pottery and I worked with Philip Riedinger and so we were Care and Riedinger that was marked in our stoneware pottery. Now the pottery itself, the clay was not native to this area. So it had to be shipped up from New Jersey, which is a relatively expensive proposition, and it was raw clay. So we had to put, you know, a large quantity in what we called a pug mill. A pug mill was like a very large vat with like a wooden mallet hammer that we basically come down and pound the raw clay, and we were able to get the stones and the wood fibers out of it. Once it was properly prepared, we would be able to pinch off the size of the clay, the little clumpy clay, and we were skilled enough, I've been skilled for years, where I knew a clump this big was a one gallon pot or jar, a clump this big, a little bigger would be two gallons, and it was a skill that I achieved. So of course we'd have a potter's wheel, and of course the pottery became very large. I had you know, workers that worked for me, um, they'd be thrown on the potter's wheel, and they'd be formed into pots, jugs, or jars. This being a jar would have been sold with or without a lid. That is a water cooler and that's a jug. And of course, all these were part of the preserving of uh, foodstuffs for the community, which I did value as being a valuable part, doing my share to help the community grow and prosper. Well, once it was put on the potter's wheel and formed, it was soft enough so we would stamp our maker's mark. Of course, this is my maker's mark, Adam Care with Gipsy. Then once it was dry, we would then put what we called cobalt oxide. That's what was brushed on, where you can see you know, this one having a bird and it's a floral design. It was virtually clear when it was first applied with the brush. Sometimes we used a slip cup to be a little thicker design. But that being said, once it was fired in the kiln at 2100 degrees, that's what would then turn these a, a vibrant cobalt blue design. That we'd shovel salt up in the top of the kiln and it would vaporize and form a silica. And that's what that shiny glaze is on the outside. It makes it easier to clean. These had the tensile strength of steel, so it wasn't like they were just going to leak out of the foodstuffs, but just made it easier to clean up. Inside is what we call an Albany slip glaze. The Albany slip was actually a silk that was found up near Albany, and that was used as the interior. It gets very, very shiny. There again, it helps to be able to clean these more effectively. So that's been my trade. Um, I was also very active in, in other ways. I, um, in 1873, I became um, deacon of my Baptist church, uh, which I, ha I am up to this day. I also taught Bible school for many years at, at my church. Um, I became alderman. I was actually elected twice as an alderman. Um, once I was put on the board of supervisors for my ward. I also, in, um, in 1876, another passion was taking care of the poor. Me being poor when I was a boy, became very prosperous in my trade. Uh, and one of the trades that uh, we also were making was sewer pipe. Sewer pipe was one of the valuable products that we sell as part of the utilitarian stoneware that we use to preserve foods. But the actual sewer pipe is very, very important to my community as far as transporting clean water because we have a very, very good sand filtration system that's been set up nearby my pottery. 
Uh, but this is all part of, of the trade that I do. But in 1876, as I say, I became a commissioner, appointed a commissioner on the board for the, um, the alms house, which I pride myself. I've continued to be on the board for the alms house to this day. Um, as I say, I haven't been feeling that well. I seem to have some heart palpitations. But um, anybody have the time? Because I have to be back at the, at the pottery by uh, quarter, uh, it's um, half past 11. I'm supposed to meet the Reverend, uh, what was his name again? So Reverend Nelson. Uh, anybody have time? Well, before I forget, I, I don't want anybody to leave yet because I would like you to be able to buy some of my wear. So I'm going to pass this around if you please look at my prices. I've got a full price list. Um, you can mail your, your orders to 141 Main Street. Please, please don't forget. Um, or if you want to leave an order with me now today, because, you know, the, the jars and the jugs are sold by the dozen. And I've got the, the listing there. Uh, I know most people don't need a dozen water coolers, so I do sell them individually, one or two. And I also do special orders on request. There's a lot of competition on the market. I've had school girls from Bachelor that come down, and we have them hand and slice their names on little mugs and souvenirs for, you know, the fact that, of course, Matthew Bachelor was a, was a beer bottler, and they, of course, are able to get little beer mugs from us as a souvenir of graduating from Bachelor. So these are all things I do. There's special requests as far as forms. Um, I also do special designs. If you want to specially decorate pieces for an anniversary, um, we do have stock designs of birds on stumps, birds on branches. Um, we have um, uh, done um, pecking chickens, if anybody wants a pecking chicken design. These are all readily available in my pottery. Uh, floral designs are very, very popular. Uh, so whatever your needs are, I'm here to serve. And I serve in so many different ways. I think I better sit down now. I'm getting a little bit uh, <laughs> winded. And uh, as I say, I, at 62, I've been suffering from this heart ailment. And uh, uh, I do have to meet the Reverend. So uh, please feel free to, to send your orders. Now, anyone have any questions before I, I end my, uh, my, my uh, more or less uh, sermon on, on selling my stoneware? <laughs> any questions at all? Are you? Well, I'm glad that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Could you tell us a little bit about Ella or Ellen Care? Well, yeah, Ellen Care was one of the family members. Uh, that's, uh, I'm not real well versed on her at this moment to give you a full dissertation on her. Uh, but that's one of the things that I've been researching, the different care members. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have a lot of material that I can give you initially. I've been trying to do a lot on Adam Care and, and the, the main pottery owners. I do apologize. I don't have the information right away. Right How many right daughters did you have? Um, as far as my family members, I actually know I actually have them listed right on the um, over here. Actually, I have my wife. Um, we did have. Well, see, that's the thing. You know, I'm not even that well versed. You probably know more about my, my daughters than I do. Well, he's not feeling well. You know. <laughs> so how many children did I have? I seem to have forgotten that part. I thought Ellen was one of those children. Yeah. Yeah, she also known as Ella. Yeah, Ella, yes. Yeah. But do you remember how many I have? Because I, know, I, I, I seem to have I've forgotten that person. Six. six. Yeah. But it's tough to keep track, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Actually, I'm so active in the community. I hear you. I'm never home. So I don't know how I have any children, you know? Now, my wife's not looking, I guess. You need a vacation. Okay, before we head to the reception, we also have a descendant. Two of them. Two descendants in that. Oh. I'm bad. But I thought you'd know. Very nice.